Welcome back, I'm Nicolene Peck. I teach parenting through the lens of self-government. And in this video, which is number three of a six-part series called Gentle Parenting That Actually Stops Bad Behaviors, we are going to be talking about pre-teaching. So pre-teaching involves multiple different moments in your life, day-to-day -day life. We're going to be talking about the three different types of pre-teaching in this segment, as well as how to use meetings as a good pre-teach for the family. In this book, Parenting a House United, I talk about five different teaching styles that parents can utilize to teach their children, whether it's a moment before a behavior has occurred or after a behavior has occurred, or whether they need to just do some gentle teaching. One of those teaching styles is called pre-teaching and I alluded to it before in my last segment so hopefully you saw that one and that skill actually is one of the most effective of all of the teaching styles that I talk about in my TSG parenting course and in this book. What is pre-teaching? Pre-teaching actually is when you talk about something that you are going to do or something that is going to happen before it happens. So the highest level of communication is when you talk about when you will talk about something. So you prepare a person, you prepare your brain to start processing when you will start processing something. That sounds a little soupy, doesn't it, to talk about in that way. It sounds like, what do you mean? But I mean that you say to someone, we are going to have a meeting that when we will talk about your chore schedule and maybe changing the chore schedule, but we're not going to talk about it now. So we're going to have a meeting. Now here's a talk about a meeting that's coming. Then at the meeting, we're going to talk about the chore schedule. Then finally, we're going to make a change to the chore schedule. This is highest level communication. It decreases the anxiety the very most, and it helps people be the most effective, having change and taking positive action for their future. Pre-teaching is built upon that principle of preparing people to succeed, preparing people's brains and hearts to discuss and make change. There's three different ways that we use pre-teaching in regular interactions. So those three types of pre-teaching are instructional pre-teaching, situational pre-teaching, and then prepping. So let's talk about those three different types of pre-teaching now. All three types of pre-teaching are talked about in Parenting a House United. You can get full learning there and you can get that book right now for free. If you click on the link in the description below this video, it will take you to a place where you can get this book completely for free. You just have to pay a little bit for shipping so that we can get it to you. So click on the link now. So let's talk about instructional pre-teaching. Instructional pre-teaching is kind of what I'm doing right now. I'm saying, what is it that you want out of your gentle parenting experience? Do you want to have a good connection, some empathy, some understanding, some mutual respect? then you've got to prepare everybody to do that. So one thing that we do in the teaching self-government parenting model when we are instructing someone for the future is we start with a picture in mind of who we're becoming as a family. We call this our family vision. After we've established this picture of who we are going to become in the future, then we use skills and principles to help us stay on track so that we can hit that mark of who we are trying to become. But that means I have to teach the skills too. So ahead of time, I am going to teach my children the four basic skills that I mentioned in the last segment. And I'm also going to teach them about what self-government is so that they know the foundational principle behind all of the teaching that we're doing. So that they learn they get to make choices, when they get to make choices, how to be understood and heard by their parents. I'm also going to teach them how I'm going to correct problems if those problems arise. We're going to even take some time to do role play practicing ahead of time of those exact correction moments. In one of the other segments of this training series, I will go into details about how to do a correction. So hang on tight and we'll get to that. 
So when I teach my children everything, where we're going, what skills we're going to need and how I'm going to correct them, now they are ready. They have been instructed. I will even teach them that I will pre-teach them in the minute. I will probably call that prepping. So we'll talk about prepping in just a few minutes, but let's talk about situational pre-teaching first. Situational pre-teaching is when I take some time when an upcoming situation is about to occur to prepare the child's brain so that they don't get stuck in the limbic or the emotional part of the brain, but instead they use that prefrontal cortex and they start problem solving before the situation is fully even out on the table. When a child knows for instance, that they might have to accept a no answer. They can get very anxious if they think the answer might be no. But if you say, hey, do you remember how to accept a no answer? When you accept a no answer, you look at the person, you keep a calm face, voice, and body, you say okay, or you ask to disagree appropriately, which you can always do, and then you say okay and drop the subject. So remember, if you choose to accept no answers or disagree appropriately, then you'll be praised, we'll have the opportunity to talk about it. If you choose not to accept the no answer and you choose to maybe not be calm or something like that, then I'll have to do a correction. We'll take some time to get you calm. So it will take a lot more of your time to go through that. And then we'll need to do some practices of things the right way and you'll get the opportunity to earn an extra chore. So it could save more time for you if you choose to just be calm and use your skill ahead of time, knowing that you can always disagree appropriately. Okay, here's your no answer. No, you can't have another cookie. Or maybe it's no, you can't go out and play again after dinner. Whatever it is that you might be sharing with the child. You tell them no, hopefully they use the skill because you prepared them. And then if they don't use the skill, you just follow through with whatever training needs to occur. Either you praise them, you tell them they did a great job, they move on, have more time with their evening, or you tell them, oh, this is one of those moments where we're going to need to do a correction. And you've already taught them in a, in a instructional pre-teach what that correction will be like. So that is something that they already have full knowledge of. Now you just need to follow through because you prepared them in the minute. So in a good situational pre-teach, you tell them this is the situation. This is what I suggest doing this would be a good choice or what you should do. If you choose to do the positive, this would be the positive consequence, whether it's natural or whether it's synthetic. Doesn't really matter so much, but bringing up the natural is always a good idea. And then saying, if you choose not to use the skill, then this is what we will do. This is how we'll handle it. And that's okay. I'm there for you, right? No problem. And so if you choose the negative, here's the negative right? How we can handle that. And then we give a rationale. Well, it's probably going to take us a little bit more time. They need to understand why they won't want to choose that. And usually that rationale needs to be something that matters to them. I might even go as far as to practice accepting a no answer with them before we even get to the real no answer they might care about. We might do a role play practice or I might have them repeat pack the steps to me. You saw that in the situational pre-teach, I also told them what the steps were. So I have everything prepared. Now I can say no and then I can just follow through with what comes next. So let's talk about prepping. What is prepping? Prepping is when a person already understands the situational pre-teaches pretty well. They have been instructed, they have practiced many times, and you are just giving them a little cue to bring them to front brain so that you don't have to go through the entire situational pre-teach. Now, I'm going to just teach you right now, you wanna use situational pre-teach at first, for quite a while before you just get into prepping. If your child is older, you'll probably be able to get to prepping sooner than you would if the child is little. So just keep that in mind as well. A prepping basically is where you say something like, I'm going to give you a no answer. Remember how to accept a no answer? And then they say, yes. And you say, okay, no, you can't go outside and play right now because whatever reason, we have to do this and this and this, okay? And then they say okay, or they disagree appropriately, and then you treat that situation accordingly, just like you told them you would in those, all of those practices when you were doing that instructional teaching and those role plays ahead of time. So you see, it's very short. Do you remember how to accept a no answer? No, 
you can't do whatever. Or do you remember how to follow an instruction? Here's your instruction. I needed you to make your bed or whatever the instruction has to be. And then you say, okay, to prompt them to say, okay, to you so that they can know they are okay. And they are saying they are okay with you giving that instruction or that no answer. They're honoring your parental authority, which is an important part of keeping those roles in the right place. Like we talked about in one of the previous segments. Now I promised we would talk about meetings. There are three different types of meetings that we have as a family in our teaching self-government parenting structure. Those three meetings are couples meetings, family meetings, and individual mentor meetings. The individual mentor meetings are is one child with both parents or one child with one parent. The family meeting is the whole group together. Then of course the couples meeting is just husband and wife together making plans for the family, for themselves and their relationship and for the child. Let's focus our attention right now on the family meetings. In all of these meetings, everyone is basically pre-teaching. Okay, so this is a time where they are doing instructional pre-teaching. They are pre-teaching either the husband and wife relationship for how they will handle circumstances in the future, or the family for how they will handle family situations in the future, or issues that the family sees that it might be facing that it needs to come up, to, come up with solutions for. And then in the mentor meeting, those are individual things just for that individual, things that they might be working on, goals they're setting, or problems that they're trying to overcome. In a family meeting, the whole family gathers together for 20 minutes or less. No more than 20 minutes unless they have a vote to make the meeting go longer. This means the meeting needs to stick to the point. Now there's a section of the meeting for announcements, family schedules, stuff like that. And then there's a section for topics where each member of the family gets the opportunity to bring up a possible topic of concern. And then votes are had on those topics so that everybody can have a chance to discuss the topic. And then once a vote is made and the majority has cast their vote, as long as it's not immoral, because parents can always override something that might be immoral or too expensive or something like that. Something they just won't do, like beat a child or put soap in their mouth or something like that. They would say, no, I'm not gonna do those things. So I'm sorry, that's not gonna work. We're gonna have to come back to something else that will work, maybe an extra chore or something like that. Like that something that would be harmless to a person then the family votes together and once that decision has been made by vote then the family has to be held to it until at least the next family meeting because those topics can always be brought back up again if they need to so this instructional time holds everybody accountable week by week as the family has these meetings and more instruction can happen which leads to more family unity and more desire to self govern, which is the whole goal of the teaching self-government parenting approach. Don't forget, you get this book for free right now if you click the link below this video and you, we will send it to you completely free no matter where you are in the world, but you will have to pay for the shipping to get it to you. But it should be a savings for you and I hope it's useful to you because this is my mission to the world to try to help families be more united and more gentle. Now join me for tomorrow's segment where we talk about improving relationships. Isn't that what we all want? Close bonds and relationships. I'll see you tomorrow.